ask them to find the, the number answer, which is fine, you can just write down the answer with or without calculations. But often, and this is what I've stressed here, is that you have to give reasons for your answers and you have to mention certain key words in order to get the mark. So that it might be worth two marks to find X and two marks to find Y. One mark each for the number answer and then one mark each for the reason or the keyword you need. So we're, we're going to talk about the keywords as we go through. That's why all the questions are going to say give reasons. Okay. Now one of the first uh, things we could do, there's many ways to answer these questions. There's really loads and loads and loads of ways to answer these questions. Um, and you can kind of go about it in different ways. So I'm going to go about it just in one way, but if you get to the answer in another way, then that, that, that's probably uh, acceptable too. If I just highlight oops, that there, what I've got there is got an upside down F or a T, I've got an upside down F, and that means that X is going to be the same as 125. So X is 125 degrees, and the reason is because uh, these two angles are corresponding, and that's the keyword. And you have to say that corresponding angles are equal. Okay, so that's one of the reasons you'd have to give one mark for uh, the time 125, one mark for mentioning that corresponding angles are equal. Now, if we go along and we look at, um, if we take the orange away now, and we just look at uh, X and Y, um, we now know, if we pull out the highlighter, that both this angle and this angle must add up to 180. So we can tell straight away that Y must be 55 degrees, and the reason why is uh, angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees, okay? So you have to be able to explain what you're doing or how you got came to your answers when you do these questions. There are a couple of other ways of doing this first one. I'm not gonna do this for every question, but I will run it through this first one. I could have said that this angle down here was 125 degrees, vertically opposite angles across two straight lines, they're gonna be the same. And then this time, that X, if I draw this shape, I haven't got an F, I've got a Z shape that complains. Now the Z shape here will be alternate angles. So in this case, X and 125 are alternate uh, angles. And that means that they're the same. It's another keyword, okay? So alternate, you're looking for the Z shape and corresponding, you're looking for the F shape. Let's just get rid of all of that in case we don't really need it. Okay, so we can move on to question two. Again, there's probably several ways we can answer this question. Let's have a look at a couple of these ways. Well, we know that um, this angle in here must be 118 degrees because these two angles must add up to 180. 62 and 118 add up to 180. And then if I pull out the highlighter again, and we can see that this angle here is um, a nice Z shape with our parallel lines. Remember our parallel lines are denoted by these two arrows here, and in this question it was by these two arrows. It tells us that those are the parallel lines. So we can tell straight away that X is 118 degrees because it is an alternate angle to 118, and we got the 118 from making a straight line, so that's how we do that. Let's pull that off, pull that off. Now there's a couple of ways you can get to this answer. You can either use the X as 118 and add it up to the Y to make 180, and you'd explain that. Or you could see, again using our keywords, that if I draw this backwards F here, this 62 here, is the same as the Y there, so I've got a backwards F. So I could quite equally say that Y is 62 degrees because um, corresponding angles are equal. So in this case, Y and 62 are corresponding, the X and 118 are alternate. 
Let's keep moving on. Question three. Oh, just a quick mention. In this question here, actually, this 40 here was a dummy. Uh, we didn't really need that. There are other ways you could, there are other things you could use. Um, sometimes you need the numbers given. Sometimes they put dummy values in to try and confuse you, to try and uh, catch you out. And in this case, we didn't need the 40 degrees whatsoever. Question three, we've got to find this angle down here. Again, there's a couple of routes we can go. Um, I see automatically that these two lines are parallel. That could be useful. Also, to find this angle in here, where the orange dot is, I know that all three of these have to add up to uh, 180. So 28 plus 95, that's equal to 100, 110, 118, 123 degrees. That means if we take 123 from 180, we get 57 degrees. So I would label this up on my diagram, and that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do in the exam. Put the angles you've worked out on your diagram, makes it easier for you. And you can also get marked sometimes. I have to be able to mark that. And if we spot now, if we look at the two parallel lines and we've got a Z shape between them, that tells us that G and the 57 degrees are all turn up. So G is equal to 57 degrees. G and 57 are all turn. Again, that's the key word they're looking for. All turn angles. Okay, so first thing we used was a straight line, 180 degrees here. And then we've used um, then we use the fact that G and this 57 make a Z shape, but we have to mention the keyword of alternate. Question four: Find angles X and Y. Okay. First thing I might draw on is this is 180 degrees, 120 degrees, sorry, vertically opposite the other one. These two add up to um, must be the same. That means we can also work this out because the whole lot must be 360. And if these two are 120 each, that gives us 240. So if we do 360 minus 240, I get 120 degrees. Now I've got to split that equally because both these angles are going to be the same. So it means that this angle here is 60 and this angle here is 60. I could have quite easily got that from the fact that these two must add up to 180 on a straight line. Right, now has that helped us? Well, maybe not, we didn't need that right now. But if we consider these two parallel lines, if we draw, draw a giant Z shape here, that tells us that X must be 68, they're alternate. Forget whatever happens in between, these two lines are alternate, uh, parallel, the top and bottom ones. So X must be 68 degrees x and 68 degrees are alternate angles that makes them the same again we can't use z angles we've got to use the keyword alternate and now actually if we consider just if we consider this inside shape now just there we've got a triangle now we know that triangles add up to 180 and we know this is 68 here. So if we do 60 plus 68, we get 128 degrees. And that tells us that Y must be 52 degrees. So if Y is 52 degrees, the reason for is angles in triangle, so the triangle are 180 degrees. So we needed to kind of use a combination of, of our work in order to find out some of the other answers. Okay, Again, still giving reasons for our answers in case they're asked for an exam. And last question, quite a complicated diagram here. It's important you spot that this line and this line are the parallel lines. Let's see. Well, if you consider all the way around the outside, it's not very accurate, but if you consider all the way around there, you've got a triangle. That tells us that 92 plus 21 is equal to 
110, 113 degrees. So we can find out that x must make that total up to 180 because it's a triangle. So x must be 67 degrees. And the reason angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. So that's the first bit. Let's just move that orange triangle out of the way. Otherwise it will come a bit confusing. Let's also put 100, uh, let's put 67 on our diagram. Well, we know, what else do we know? Well, if we draw a line here, oops, and let's draw that again. If we draw this line here, line going up there, and a line going across there, then we've got the z angle, so we know that y must be 92 degrees because y and 92 are alternate. And that's the keyword we need. So let's add that to our diagram 92 degrees. And that just leaves us with the z to find. So again, if I have a look, what have we got? Well, we can work out this angle here because they both can add up to 180. So this angle here must be 88 degrees using Y and that angle to be 180. And then if we consider the shape around the outside, Here, we consider that's a quadrilateral. Now we know that quadrilaterals add up to 360. So what have we got? We've got 92, oops. We've got 92, we've got 88, and we've got 67. So if we add all these up, it's 10, 17. This is 15, 23, 24 makes 247 degrees. If we now take that from 360, we get 113 degrees. We find out that that's 113, so Z is equal to 113 degrees, and that's because angles in a quadrilateral this time, not a triangle or a straight line, quadrilateral, any four-sided shape, the total of the angles on the inside uh, add up to 360 degrees. Okay. So we found our three answers and we had three like, reasons of how we did it on the way. Again, there's, there's other ways we can find out this answer. Um, Z, we could have found out. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it, actually. So just if you're interested, we could have found out this angle here is 92, it's opposite this. Then you've got a triangle running round the outside here. So you can know that that's up to 180, allows you to find that angle. And once you found that angle, you can then quite easily find out what Z is, because those two must add up to 180. Okay, that's the end of the video for now.